An experimental cancer vaccine used to treat advanced melanoma from a company called Amgen just proved effective in shrinking tumors. And it's actually kind of overwhelming. Not only did it shrink tumors when directly injected, but it also triggered what's called a systemic immune response, which further fought the cancer. So they analyzed 4,000 tumor lesions in the study. Of the directly injected tumors, 64% shrank by at least half, and 47% of those had a complete response, meaning the lesion had disappeared, just totally disappeared. So, there's, I mean, they're still going to continue to test, and I know it's got to go through multiple stages before it gets approved by the FDA. But what we're looking at here is a very high likelihood that we just came up with a vaccine to fight advanced melanoma. That's a form of cancer. We essentially just came up with a cancer vaccine that works. I'm, I'm so blown away by this, man. And people always, I'm sure conservatives and Republicans and Christians always wonder, why is he so obsessed with science? Why is he always talking about it? Why is he always singing its praises? Because of stuff like this. I mean, seriously, sit back and think about it. To, in previous generations, if something happened before the Enlightenment and before medicine and science, if something happened, you're pretty much fucked. Like, you have all the silly little uh, remedies that don't work, like, I don't know, kill a goat, sprinkle its blood, and dance around the fire or some shit. That doesn't work. Use the snake oil, rub it on there. That doesn't fucking work. I mean, we can go through so many different examples of put leeches on the body to suck out the bad blood. That'll cure your cancer. Nonsense. Didn't fucking work. Pray. Didn't work. But now we finally live in an age where we are, we have the capability to actually fix a lot of these problems that we experience as humans. And why we don't put all of our resources into this area, I'll, I'll never understand that. I'll never understand that. Because if you really think about it, the idea of Jesus is so amazing because why? Because, I don't know, maybe if somebody, for example, might have had cancer in his time and he was on the verge of death, Jesus could have said, I, since I am God, I cure you of your cancer. And everybody's, oh my God, he's, he's actually a God. Look at him. He really is... He's Jesus. He's God. He can fix things. He can make this life perfect. But wait, if that's why he's so special and that's why we loved him so much, then science does the exact same thing. And the difference is science actually fucking does it. Jesus was just a fairy tale. It was a myth. He didn't, the guy, there's no evidence that the guy actually is the son of God. There's just as much evidence for him being a true God or some sort of deity as there is for Muhammad. There's just as much evidence for the Bible as there is for the Quran, as there is for the Bhagavad Gita, as there is for the Greek gods and the Roman gods and Scientology and Mormonism and you name it. So here we have a situation where we are actually close because of science. We are actually close to creating the idea of heaven on this planet. That's not to say that everything is going to be perfect. There's no such thing as a purely 100% utopian society. But we can kind of get close. You know, we're kind of getting close. Between stuff like the internet where you have uh, the world at your fingertips, you can get any question answered immediately. Technology, you know... Uh, is out of this world, uh, cars, TV, like all these modern amenities, AC, heat, things we take for granted, microwaves. Uh, when it comes to going to the doctor and getting penicillin when you have some sort of an infection and it goes fucking away. Now, we're fucking that up a little bit now by overusing antibiotics, but it, you get the idea that I'm getting at here that we actually have ways where we have, through empiricism and through science, We've been able to drastically improve our lives. I mean, for fuck's sake, the average age of death was, what, 35? 42? Like, 100 years ago? 200 years ago? 300 years ago? And then now, we're at what? In the modern world, we're hovering around what? In the modern world. 79 years old? 82 years old on average? I mean, that is a huge accomplishment. Quality of life is going up. You know? Uh, if we actually... We create a tremendous amount of wealth if we could distribute it properly in a smart way. Uh, it, the per capita middle class income would go up. The happiness index goes up. The quality of healthcare itself goes up. Like, we are so close because of science and because of the age of reason and enlightenment to really, really get into something special. So, 
what my main point here is we should take all the ridiculous amount of money in the U.S. that we spend on these 900 military bases around the world, the $7 trillion we wasted in Iraq, for example, all the money that goes in no-bid contracts to Raytheon and Boeing and all the other defense contractors, all the money that goes to defense, stop, okay? Here's my proposal. I think we can do with 100 bases, not 900. Cut 800 bases, take all the money you save from doing that, okay, and the Afghanistan war, take all the money you save from doing that, and invest billions in a, a Manhattan Project for Science to try to cure heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and a few others, and get to work. Because here's what I guarantee you, if you take all the best minds in the world and you put them to that and you fully fund it and you don't look back... We can do this thing. It's just a matter of will at this point.